Detective is brought to you by CrimeFeed.com. You crave a good mystery, and CrimeFeed.com is your 24-7 source for getting your fix. From criminals behaving badly to the most absurd crimes of our time, CrimeFeed brings you the real story. CrimeFeed.com. Due to the graphic nature of the content, Detective may not be suitable for all audiences. How many movies have you been to? How many TV shows have you watched? Where the motive is millions. It is a bag of diamonds. It is something of huge value resulting in the perpetrator leaving in his private jet to conceal himself in Brazil from the investigators. Uh, This is what it is, right? If you've been listening to Detective, you know episode three was about motives for murder. Money, sex, and revenge. I'm Garnsey Sloan for Investigation Discovery, and this is Detective. True stories from behind the yellow tape. The ones you don't hear on TV. On this episode, Lieutenant Kenda talks about money as the motive. You may have heard about murder cases where millions are at stake, but according to Lieutenant Kenda, most murders happen over much smaller sums. I have a guy who owes a guy $15 of a drug debt. The drug dealer decides he needs to make an example out of this guy, and he murders him and takes the $15 out of his pants and leaves the rest of the money. Because after all, his debt was only $15. Example two, two guys in a bar. They know each other. They don't know each other well, but they're casual acquaintances. They work together. They're drinking. And they're shooting pool. The pool table requires two quarters to release the balls for each game. They're shooting eight ball, so the guy who wins the game has to put the two quarters in for the next game. And that's the bet, back and forth. Nobody's actually getting any money. It's 50 cents to allow them to continue to play, but they're all drinking. And then one guy loses count, and he insists that it's the other guy's turn to put the two quarters on the table. It's not my, it's your turn. The argument becomes heated. One pulls out a 45 automatic and shoots this guy in the chest. He's dead before he hits the pool table. And then he runs in front of 50 witnesses. He killed him for 50 cents, not the bag of diamonds. Money's the motive. Emotion pulls the trigger. Murder for hire involving small amounts of money for payment is common, according to Lieutenant Kenda. Here, he describes a shocking story of murder for $100. I have a pimp who hires two guys to kill one of his horrors as an example to the others because she's holding out money on him. He pays these two $100 to kill this girl. This is the hit, right? The the million-dollar hit in the movies. A hundred bucks. They kill her. They stuff her in the trunk of a car. They stop to buy gas. They get in a dispute before they leave the city about who's going to pay for the gas out of their share of the hundred. They get in a fist fight in front of the car. The clerk calls the police. Show up. They break this fight up. The officer looks at the trunk lid of the car and it's got blood on it. So now we are getting a warrant and we have a dead prostitute in the trunk over gas money. Motivation about money is always very small amounts. The emotion behind it is what drives it. I am angry about you owing me $15. I am angry about you putting two quarters in a pool table. 
I'm angry about paying for the gas out of my $50 for killing a girl we have in the trunk. That's the reality of murder. That's the reality of money as a motive. It's never a lot of money, ever. Sometimes there are larger sums of money involved, especially when marriages go bad. Instead of getting a divorce, some take matters into their own hands. Here's a case of murder over life insurance. A guy uh, decides that his wife needs to die. He doesn't like her anymore. He's tired of her, so he meets a girlfriend. He begins a torrid affair with his girlfriend. He writes an insurance policy for $100,000 on his wife's life. It is a double indemnity policy. If she is murdered, it pays $200,000. In his mind, that's all the money on the planet, two hundred grand. For eight months, he convinces his girlfriend that his wife needs to go to heaven. The girlfriend shoots the wife in a public street, posing as an armed robber. Two days after the event, I arrested the girlfriend, and she confessed to me her involvement in this crime. He believed, and she did too, that $200,000 was more than enough to combine her two children with his three children, join these families together, and live the rest of their lives in luxury with 200 grand. I don't think so. These people are college graduates. You would think you would know better? Maybe you should consider a divorce attorney? No, let's consider murder. Because we're gonna make money. We're gonna make $200,000. That's all the money there is. No, it isn't. But to them, they thought it was. That's the highest dollar amount I ever had involved in a murder case, 200 grand. But if you consider the reality of that, exactly how much money is it? Is it enough to make you kill? I asked Lieutenant Kenda what the difference is between the person who kills for $50 and the person who kills for 200,000. If you are a street person, when you went to the third grade, your expectations of life aren't very great. To you, $50, your share of a, of a contract homicide, that's all the money there is. So your expectations aren't very high to begin with. But your mindset is exactly the same as the guy who thinks 200 grand is enough for him. It's all about the price. To those first two, that small amount of money was enough. To the third guy, he needed another price. But it's still a price. So your perspective is what drives the amount. Now, you think that the average person would listen to that and say, well, that's just insane. That's insane. Well, no, it's not. It's not insane. It is driven by who they are and what their lifestyle is. If it matters to you, it matters because you're going to kill for it. Sometimes the most well-educated people can make poor decisions when it comes to money. In this case, Lieutenant Kenda describes a business deal that led to murder. I have a guy who is in business with a guy. They're working on a project that is going to result, most likely, in a great deal of money coming their way, between $500,000 and a million dollars should come into their hands as a result of efforts they're both making to make this deal close. One guy decides that the ineptness and the inability of the other caused the deal to go up in smoke. The deal never took place, thus the money was never paid. Now, he never got the money, but he lost the money. And he blamed his business partner He believed he was entitled to it. And in his mind, the other guy made mistakes and the deal never closed. He was infuriated. He blamed him for the loss of money that was never really his. That's even a different twist on things, you know. You didn't lose money. You never had the money. He didn't take money from you because you never had it to start with. But in your mind... It cost you 500000 to a million dollars. 
This guy's college educated, has an MBA. He goes to a strip club and he starts talking to strippers, telling him he needs a hitman. Why he decided the strippers know who hitmen are, I have no idea. But he runs across this stripper and she says, well, you're gonna pay the guy? Well, yeah, I'm gonna pay 10,000, I want a guy killed. My boyfriend can do it because our man is such an amateur, he employs these two to kill his business partner for $10,000. They screw that up to the max and they get arrested. And of course, they can't wait to tell us how this happened and how this guy paid them all this money. And again, to them, 10 grand, all the money in the world, more than enough killed for. In his mind, the loss of potential money was more than enough of a motive. I went into his office and arrested him for murder and he passed out across the desk. I thought the guy had a heart attack. I called medical. I thought I killed him by announcing he was under arrest. It turns out he just passed out. They woke him up and we threw him in prison. And sometimes, just being in debt can motivate someone to kill. Oh, there's been a couple of those where there were there were personal debts involved to where they were driven by indebtedness to someone who they owed money to, a large amount of money. Not for some criminal purpose, but just money that had been borrowed or somehow engaged in. One was a real estate transaction where a guy borrowed money from an individual instead of a bank and then couldn't make it happen and couldn't get the money and lost the money and so on and so forth. The guy's pressuring him big time to pay him back. They get in an argument, I don't have the money, you're going to have to wait for the money. No, but what I do have is a bullet and maybe the debt will go away. And he killed this guy and then tried to conceal that fact. But we put two and two together and resolved that. But his motivation was indebtedness. He didn't have the money to pay the guy. It was a legitimate debt. He certainly owed the money, but he didn't have it. And there was probably no way he would ever have it. So he was fearful of what that would mean for him. Without thinking about what murder would mean, he was more fearful of the consequences of bankruptcy and or financial pursuit by this guy who had reached the point of making those threats, that he was going to sue him, he was going to take everything he owned, and he killed him instead. You do find those kind of motivations involved in murder cases where sometimes just indebtedness is enough. And that's why I say money is applied as a general overview term. It's not always directly money, but it's connected to money. Some way, somehow... Debts that were owed and cannot be paid, money that is thought to be coming in their hands that never comes because of somebody else's fault, debts that are owed in small amounts, insurance policies that they think will pay if they invent this clever murder plot. Murder plots are never very clever. You wind up encountering those all the time. They're common. They're very common. Detective is produced by Investigation Discovery, with special thanks to Kevin Bennett, Amy Angelowitz, and Emily Kaiser. Many thanks to the best audio engineer in the business, the mighty Joe Powers. Original music was composed by the talented Chris Kennedy. Cover art was designed by Anand Galat. Sign up now at iTunes to get Detective on your feed. And join me, Garnsey Sloan, every week for a new episode. Next time on Detective. I have a city worker comes home from work. He hears noise in the bedroom, he enters the bedroom, he discovers why it's so noisy in here, and it's his wife cavorting with her boyfriend. They both look quite shocked. He keeps a gun in the bedroom to protect the family from intruders. He grabs that gun and he starts shooting. 